After studying this module, you shall be able to understand RNA, its type and uses, processing of different types of samples for RNA isolation and methods of isolation, purification and fractionation of RNA. Ribonucleic acid or RNA is one of the three major biological macromolecules that are essential for all known forms of life along with DNA and proteins. The primary difference between RNA and DNA is that RNA is a single stranded molecule folded onto itself comprising of ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose in its backbone and the nitrogenous base uracil rather than thymine whereas DNA is a double stranded molecule. Different types of RNA can be found naturally occurring in the human body, each of which has a particular function, messenger RNA or mRNA. Its prime function is to carry the information that is essential to make a specific protein from a gene on the DNA molecule to ribosomal RNA. Ribosomal RNA or rRNA is present inside the ribosome that are found in the cytoplasm. During the phase of translation, rRNA binds to transfer RNA and increase the rate of formation of peptide bonds between amino acids during the process of translation. Transfer RNA or tRNA its function is to transfer specific amino acids to rRNA during the process of protein synthesis. tRNA also participates in reactions not associated to ribosome dependent translation. Even though it is of fundamental significance to normal cell function, RNA is once in a while employed as a source of forensic information. This is partly because RNA is considered to be an unstable molecule that is rapidly broken down after death by the body's own enzymes and those of microbes. However, the rate of degradation of RNA is determined partly upon its location and it is likely that the degree of the degradation could be used as a sign of the PMI of death. Apparently, our center focuses in this module would be an extraction, fragmentation of RNA from different types of evidences that are collected from the scene of crime. There are various methods for tissue disruptions and for RNA detachment available. Besides proteins, Body fluids and tissues also contain mRNA. It is sort of a carbon copy of DNA and the precursor to proteins contains biomarkers that like proteins are specific for the type of tissues or body fluids present. The biomarkers hidden in the mRNA can identify the body fluids present in a crude mixture and may thus aid in the reconstruction of the crime scene. To correctly identify the complex mixtures of body fluids and tissues found on an item or a person, highly specific and sensitive forensic testing techniques are required. mRNA being a temporary copy of DNA required for the synthesis of proteins begins deteriorating after accomplishing its task. However, studies have shown that RNA may be extracted from biological strains as old as 16 years. Thus, while DNA testing helps to identify a suspect, mRNA analysis could be used to determine the age of biological strains that in turn could place the suspect at the scene of a crime at a specific time. RNA is prone to digestion 
by a wide variety of endogenous and exogenous RNAs and because these RNAs are present on almost all objects that come into contact with humans therefore extreme care is required to be taken to prevent simple contamination and degradation. Strong denaturants are used for intact RNA isolation to inhibit endogenous RNAs. RNAs being heat stable refolds following heat denaturation. Inactivation of RNAs is difficult because no cofactors are required. Utilization of STS and phenol and 4M guanidinium thiocyanate are the two most common isolation techniques which are employed. Isolation and purification of RNA. Major steps of the isolation procedure are to isolate the RNA completely from rest of the cellular materials and to preserve the integrity of the RNA structure that is extracted. Solubilization. Fundamentally all procedures of RNA extraction depends upon the fact that disrupting tissues in an aqueous solution having organic buffers, guanidinium salts and ionic detergents will help to isolate the required material. The buffers that are most frequently applied consists of tris and sodium acetate which are added to adjust the maintain pH, chiotropic agents which are compounds that disrupt both hydrophobic and hydrogen bond interactions are added to denatured proteins. The most frequently used chiotropic agent for this process are guanidinium salts. The benefit of using guanidinium for the process of purification of RNA was first informed in 1951 by Volkin and Carter and since then only practically all RNA extraction procedures have assimilated by the use of high concentrations about 4 to 6 molar of guanidinium thiocyanate or guanidinium hydrochloride. Ionic detergents are added to help solubilize cell membranes and lipids. The most frequently used detergents consists of sodium dodecyl sulfate and sodium lauryl sarcosinate, sodium deoxycholate and cetyl trimethyl ammonium bromide. Mechanical homogenization. Isolation of RNA from muscle and skin tissues might be difficult due to the presence of connective tissue, collagen and contractile proteins. Proteinase K is an enzyme that retain its activity under circumstances that denature most other proteins. For these samples it is generally advised to first use mechanical homogenization in high concentrations of guanidinium. Then the homogenate should be diluted to decrease the guanidinium concentration. Distinctive categories of samples are used for diverse methods to disrupt cells. In spite of the presence of detergents and chiotopic agents, it is important to likewise fuse some types of mechanical homogenization to entirely disrupt cell walls, plasma membranes and organelles. For few specimens for example, mammalian cells, expansion of chiotopic operators is sufficient to lyse the cells. However, mechanical homogenization is still prescribed to help with the solubilization of organelles. Different tissues require more extreme mechanical processing. Mechanical procedures for homogenizing tissue comprise of utilizing cryogranulating with a motor pestle cutting utilizing a rotor stator homogenizer or a sonicator or by bead beating. Recovery of RNA lysate. 
Following homogenization, two approaches are generally used to recover RNA from the cell lysate. First, extraction by means of organic solvents and secondly, by solid phase extraction on silica. Organic extraction. It is said to be one of the most established procedures for recovering RNA from the lysate. It consists of utilizing a mixture of acidified phenol or chloroform or isoamyl alcohol. Acidified phenol chloroform isoamyl alcohol is added to make emulsion following the separation of the organic and aqueous phase by centrifugation. Out of the two separated organic and aqueous phases, the aqueous phase consists of RNA. However, denatured proteins and lipids separate into the interface and organic phase respectively. The aqueous phase can be recovered by gently pipetting into another Eppendorf tube. In acidic conditions, DNA is specifically isolated into the organic phase. It has been observed that an optimum pH is highly crucial in this procedure since at a higher pH the DNA will set up in the aqueous layer and contaminate the RNA. Once the pipetting of the aqueous layer is done, the RNA which is significantly concentrated in it is desalted using ethanol or isopropanol precipitation. Solid phase extraction. A substitute technique for extraction of RNA from other cellular macromolecules incorporates utilizing solid phase extraction onto silica. Since nucleic acids and silica are both charged negatively, the interaction is not purely because of charge-charge interactions. Rather, binding is thought to be a direct result of formation of cationic salt bridge which is advanced by chiotopic compounds. When this technique is used to purify RNA, the guanidinium does both activities that is to denature proteins and to promote binding of the silica. Firstly, tissues are homogenized in the vicinity of guanidinium and then the alcohol typically ethanol or isopropanol is added before the lysate is applied. After washing, the nucleic acid is eluted from the column by applying a low ionic strength buffer. RNA extraction and purification from human tissue samples using triazole. Biohazard considerations. Biohazard considerations accommodates the potential infection or disease transmission by the material or homogenates used in the process of extraction and isolation of desired components material from any source of biological origin. Following precautions should be undertaken while performing in the lab. Wear a lab coat, gloves and proper eye protection if necessary. When using hazardous chemicals, the process of handling, collection, procedure, storage and disposal of all hazardous chemicals should be done cautiously. Once done, working with biohazardous materials, thoroughly clean up the working area and instruments according to institutional protocol. One should always practice using sterile equipment and practice sterile technique. RNA extraction procedure. Before starting the isolation and extraction procedure, make sure that the pestle and motor and instruments like forceps, spatulas and other equipment needed are sterilized and chilled on ice if necessary. Remark, all tissue samples are immediately placed and stored in RNA later. RNA later protects the tissue from RNA's activity until it can be homogenized in triazole. So it is necessary to keep everything frozen in liquid nitrogen. Remove samples of tissue from freezer and let it to liquefy enough such that the tissue can be detached from RNA later. After this step, place the tissue into the motor. With the help of a sterile razor blade, 
cut down the tissue into smaller pieces. With the help of a spatula, scrap all the cut tissue pieces together in the motor and place into 50 ml tube containing the trisole. After all the pieces of the tissue have been broken up, transfer half of the homogenate into 2 ml append off tubes. By the use of an electric homogenizer, normalize the samples in trisole completely using a small gauge generator. Homogenize every sample tube at least three times for at least one minute each time. After this step, keep the samples on ice in between each round of homogenization. Allow the samples rest for 5 minutes at room temperature. Once you observe that the cellular debris and insoluble material start to accumulate at the bottom of the tube, centrifuge the homogenate at 10,000 G for about 15 minutes at the temperature of 4 degree to spin out cellular debris and insoluble material. After centrifuging, cautiously transfer the supernatant to fresh RNA free 1.5 ml tubes. Before transferring the supernatant, make sure that there is no presence of trace material. To it add 250 microliter chloroform and shake it vigorously for about 30 seconds. If it is not shaken in vigorous manner for 30 seconds, it will decrease the RNA yield. Next step would be letting it to become stable at room temperature for about 10 minutes. Here you will start observing an initial phase of separation. For about 20 minutes, centrifuge it at 10,000 G at the temperature of 4 degrees. Now remove and transfer the aqueous layer, the topmost clean layer to fresh RNAs free. 1.5 ml tubes, transfer without interfering with the middle layer. Add an equal volume of isopropanol to each tube. Mix well and incubate it for the period of almost 6 hours at minus 20 degree. Centrifuge it at 10,000 G for 20 minutes at the temperature of 4 degrees. Now remove the isopropanol cautiously from the palate and to it add 1 ml of chilled 75% ethanol. Centrifuge it at 7500 G for 4 minutes at temperature of 4 degrees. Now with absolute care remove the ethanol. It should be kept in mind that palate does not get disturbed. Add one more time 1 ml of chilled 75% ethanol then centrifuge it at 7500 G for 4 minutes at temperature of 4 degrees. Now carefully remove the ethanol and let the pallet dry at normal room temperature for about 5 minutes. RNA purification procedure. Add 350 microliter of buffer RLT holding beta mercaptethanol to the 100 microliter of RNA in water and mix it carefully with the help of a pipette. To the above solution add 250 microliter of 100% ethanol and mix it thoroughly with the help of pipette. Now third step would be transferring all 700 microliter into a spin column and centrifuge it at 10,000 G for 30 seconds. Now put the spin column in a fresh 2 ml collection tube and to it add 500 microliter of buffer RPE. Centrifuge it at 10,000 G for 30 seconds. Add 500 microliter of 80% ethanol and centrifuge it at 10,000 G for about 2 minutes. Discard the flow through and place the spin column in a fresh 2 ml collection tube. Centrifuge at 10,000 G for 2 minutes to dry the filler membrane. Transfer the spin column to a fresh 1.5 ml append off tube and add 20 microliter of RNAs free water directly onto the filter membrane. Centrifuge at maximum speed for 1 minute. Add another 20 microliter of RNAs free water to the filter membrane. Discard the spin column and place the RNA 
in a 40 microliter of RNAs free water onto ice. Combine the 40 microliter in each tube into one, 1 1.5 ml Eppendorf tube containing 80 microliter. If the sample homogenate was split into more than two Eppendorf tubes, combine them all in this step. After RNA analysis, attach a label to RNA tube with important information and store at minus 80 degree. The resulting RNA contains large RNAs only mRNA will be lost during this procedure. RNA fragmentation. Four different methods are commonly used to fragment RNA, enzymatic fragmentation, metal ion fragmentation, heat fragmentation and sonication. The goal of this procedure is to produce a population of RNA fragments that are on average about 200 base pair in length. The effectiveness of the fragmentation reaction should be assessed by evaluating the RNA on a gel or by using a bioanalyzer. Enzymatic fragmentation. Enzymatic fragmentation is generally performed using E. coli RNAs 3. RNAs 3 randomly cleaves double stranded portions of RNA and leaves a 5 prime phosphate and a 3 prime hydroxyl group. Metal ion fragmentation. Chemically induced fragmentation uses metal ions that act as bronsted bases to extract a proton from 2 prime OH groups of ribose sugar. Lanthanide ions are particularly efficient in this procedure. However, the ions that are most commonly used are zinc and magnesium. Fragmentation is performed at high temperatures and at a slightly alkaline pH. The reaction could easily be stopped by adding a metal chelator such as EDTA. Heat fragmentation. It is also possible to fragment RNA by heating it at about 95 degrees in water for almost 30 minutes. Sonication. Another method used for RNA fragmentation is sonication. In the process of sonication, high intensity sound waves are used to produce micro bubbles which when collapse release large amounts of energy which is capable of breaking RNA bonds. Precautions. Some broad precautions are taken into consideration when working with RNA. Since RNA is more labile than DNA and RNAs are exceptionally stable enzymes, therefore additional consideration is ought to be taken when purifying and working with RNA. These are stated as maintain separate reagents and consumable for RNA extraction and isolation protocols. Process the samples quickly and keep the RNA on ice whenever possible. Plasticware can be soaked in 0.1 normal NOH per 1 ml EDTA then rinsed thoroughly with RNA's free water. Now let us summarize what we have learnt in this module. Ribonucleic acid is considered chemically similar like DNA, however it is single stranded molecule a 5 carbon ribose sugar instead of deoxyribose in its backbone and a nitrogenous base uracil rather than thymine. In multicellular organisms, RNA also synthesizes proteins. Naturally occurring RNA is of following three types, namely messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA and transfer RNA. mRNA can identify the type of body fluid encountered during crime investigation which helps in reconstruction of the crime scene events. It is also used to determine the age of biological stains that in turn could place the suspect at the scene of a crime at a specific time. Extraction and purification of RNA involves cell disruption using guanidinium thiocyanate along with the reducing agents to the sample followed by shaking it vigorously. This step breaks the disulfide bonds and deactivates the contaminant proteins 
existing in the sample. Then mixture of phenol and chloroform isomyl alcohol is added to separate the RNA samples from the solution. Both DNA as well as RNA can be isolated from the same biological sample by extracting a total nucleic acid fraction and then dividing it into two parts, treating one portion with DNAs while the other portion be treated by RNAs. The resultant will be RNA and DNA respectively.